Welcome back you guys. Today we're going to go over how to clean your tools. I actually get this question a lot about how to clean taping tools and it's not like a long you know high maintenance process. It's really quick and easy. So first let's start with the hawk and trowel right. I mean when you're working with it you should never actually be getting build up on the back of your trowel very often. I really recommend it while you're working you're frequently cleaning off the back side of the blade and so you will get lift, left with not that much that's silly but like you will get left with a little bit of stuff on the back. Anyways the hawk a quick scrape dump it into the bucket and then I come back like this and just like the back side of the trowel you should be regularly cleaning the back side of the hawk which I usually do. <laughs> Sounds like what's the name for somebody that has pet birds <laughs> cleaning the back side of their hawk but you should frequently be keeping that clean too because both of those things are going to help you keep crumbs out of your mud. So once I finish putting the mud away that's about what this is going to look like now. I could just leave it like this and come back and scrape it. The hawk is made out of aluminum. There's nothing on here that's going to rust so we could definitely leave it that way. The trowel again once you're done you know like done your basic routine cleaning of it while you're working I frequently also will actually take my knife and keep the whole thing clean because again less crumbs is a good thing. So if I'm feeling lazy and just trying to get out of the job like on a Friday I'll often leave it like this and there might be a few crumbs so right before I start working with it just a real quick scrape. This is stainless steel so it's not going to corrode at all. We will get into actually cleaning it like with water and stuff but we're not there yet. Your pan should never look like this. You should regularly be cleaning the edges of your pan so that you don't get crusties like that. Uh, once in a while while I'm working what I will often do like let's say you have to scrape something real quick and you're not anywhere that you can dispose of the mud like it's not uncommon for me to you know like if I have some crusties in the mud it's not uncommon for me to wipe it on one edge the edge I'm not working with but as soon as possible I will take that and huck it in the garbage. All right but in terms of cleaning this guy you know you just want to try and get into all the corners as often as possible. This thing is like got to be seven or eight years old. It's been dropped so many times that all the corners are deformed and I can't actually get my knife properly into any one of them. But you know I do my best. This tool, the pan, I don't like to leave crusties or crunchies on at all so usually when I'm using the pan I will also have a bucket of water handy. But if I don't I'll just do my best. I'll do my best to get everything and then when I do my next job set up the pail of water with the brush. I'll give it a quick scrub to make sure there's no chunks before I start working. Because this is all stainless steel again it's not going to corrode so leaving it in this condition between jobs is not unacceptable but it's not preferable. So in terms of cleaning it it's always good just to have some clean water on hand. Well usually it's just whatever I've been mixing with. It's good to have a long handled stiff bristled brush. You want nice stiff bristles and they should be plastic bristles. You don't want natural fiber bristles or it will just um, decay in your water, fall apart and get stuff in your mud. But in terms of cleaning it, so I don't go too nuts. I always have residual mud on my tools. You know some people would say you shouldn't but I got better things to do than get every last speck off my tools. I'm honestly not OCD about that kind of stuff. So we're just going to give this a quick brush down and all we're trying to do is get the chunks out. It's just the chunks. I don't care if there's a little bit left in here. So this is usually about how good it would be. You know, little bits there, but 
This stuff is like glued on. It's not even coming off today. Probably from adding glue to my mud, but that is adequate. That's clean enough. Trowels, really quick and easy. I always make sure to scrub inside this part really well. I hate letting mud build up in here. So that's again where a nice stiff bristle brush comes in handy. Whenever possible, I do actually clean my tools before the next job. It's really nice to come into the next job with all your tools sparkling and ready to use instead of scraping off chunks. So that would be adequate right there. The hawk, pretty straightforward. Doesn't have to be perfect either. We're just trying to get all the chunks off. And then one last time for the back to make sure, because there's always crumbs and stuff hanging out on the back. So as you can see, it's not totally perfect, right? Like I never bother getting all this stuff. I don't really worry about it. It doesn't build up there very much, but that's ready for the next job. And I'll usually just scrape the excess water off before putting it away into my case. Knives like this, I do like to clean and I especially like to keep it clean in there. I don't like, I have had um, even stainless steel knives corrode right here. So I always try and keep it pretty clean. And if I'm just leaving it, you know, between coffee breaks, like let's say I've just finished coating a wall or a room and I'm about to go have a coffee break, I'll just go like that and I often leave it next to my bucket like this to dry off. This is a stainless steel knife. I do have a carbon knife. We're gonna get into that in a bit, but this is adequate, you know. If you're worried about the water, you can just use another tool to get most of the water off before you put it away. All my stainless things and tools that won't corrode, I don't worry about a little excess water. It's not gonna be a problem. The one thing I have had happen is on this brand of knives, I have had, like I left, it overnight like this with residual water and it started to pit. So even stainless steel, some grades of it will corrode and pit if you're not careful. So don't leave it like this. The edge is gonna corrode and pit. So make sure you leave it somewhere like that where that edge can dry off before it starts to corrode. Now, last but not least, we have carbon steel. Blue steel, whatever you wanna call it. Basically, just not stainless steel. So you should never be having lots of mud building up around here and on your handles while you're working. Definitely keep it clean. And if you're having a problem with that, go back to the bucket fairly regularly because, uh, and clean it off. Because basically the more mud you have building up here, the more crumbs you're gonna have in your work, which is really annoying. So I never let my handles of my tools get this messy while working. That was just to show you guys what not to do. So keep your stiff bristled brush handy and keep that clean, please. Now the difference between the carbon steel and the stainless steel is obviously the carbon corrodes. So I'm much more fussy about keeping these clean. I should say dry. Dry and clean. If you leave mud on it, you'll have a big rust blob where the mud was. If you leave what, like, so this, even at this point, hang on. Even at this point, like just brushing that water off is not enough. This corrodes really fast. So if all of your tools are carbon steel, which probably most of you are running mostly carbon steel tools, keep a rag handy. Wipe it down right away. Some people are like, oh, I always wipe it with WD-40 or oil or something. I don't care about that. I just make sure there's no standing water left on here because it will corrode very quickly. Like over the course of a coffee break, you'll have some decent corrosion happening. Now a little bit of corrosion is fine. That's normal. Like look at this knife. It's got kind of a patina on it, right? It's not expected to be totally rust free, but what you don't want is large amounts of rust collecting and growing because then, you know, your knife's slowly deforming in those spots. It's just not, when I say deforming, what I mean is it's just, you're not gonna have even wear. If you do get rust, just sand it off with some sandpaper. It's no big deal. 
Um, I will say that I love the way a carbon steel knife feels. Like of all my knives, this is one of my favorite ones just in the flex and the way it feels when finishing. I love wiping down tapes with this knife. But because of the higher maintenance of carbon steel, I generally don't use it. That's why I've switched to all stainless. I also made that other video where I talked about the fact that I'm pretty sure the carbon in the knives was making my mud funkier. Now, since switching back to stainless steel again, definitely my mud has not been molding as fast. So I'm sure it has something to do with that. Anyways, you guys, that is how I like to clean my tools. We may as well go over buckets really quick. Not quite done here, not quite done, but almost. Oh yeah, buckets. Okay, first off, always keep the edges of your bucket clean, please. I can't handle crusty bucket edges. So wipe down that edge like that, right? Wipe it down. I don't have any other tools. We're just gonna sacrifice that mud. Um, wipe down the edge and then the top of your bucket. Always give that a scrub because that's where crumbs form. You put the lid on and then you get, every time you pull the lid off, you get crumbs falling in. Please keep the sides of your bucket clean. Give this a little clean, you know, before you put it away. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of water at the top of your bucket on the top of your mud before closing it up. But yeah, you know, you can do that. Now it's nice and tidy. There's no crumbs there. And another spot with your bucket lids, I also will often do a quick scrub here, like so. Getting all the mud out of there, just keeps everything nice and tidy. Right, so when you go to open it the next time, there's no crumbs falling in there. And honestly, that's it. That's as much as you do. Um, oh, one last thing, I'm sure you're wondering. Okay, what about, what about the mud in the bottom of the bucket? And the mixing paddle. As you can see, my mixing paddle is never totally clean. Like this is all hardened mud. It doesn't seem to get in my mud. It doesn't cause me problems. But you may have seen in other videos after I mix, I go like this. And that gets all of the wet mud off of here. So anything on here is just crusty hardened mud, it's annoying to clean, right? That's why I don't usually, because you have to kind of like get in there and like try and get it all out. It's annoying. So my paddle is never perfectly clean. This is about as good as it gets. <laughs> as for buckets, when you have that, you know, whole bunch of mud down at the bottom, what I usually do with that is I stir it up really well. And hopefully there's somewhere on the job site that I can just dump it out on the ground but it's very common to be working in high rises or some sort of building. So again, what I do is I stir it up really well so that it's all loose instead of just like a big sloppy mess. This all sounds so bad. Um, and then I pour it down the toilet. It's not gonna clog the drains. It's not thin set. Like the type of thing you don't wanna do is take cement products or say a bunch of mud that hasn't set yet. Like maybe you have a bunch of quick set and it's still not set you would never pour that all down the toilet because it's going to set in the drains and that will cause a problem. But this is all, you know, mud that has either already set and then just liquefies or it's all pre-mixed mud that's always wet anyways. And you can just pour that down the toilet. I usually flush right after just to give it a bit more. But when you think about what goes down the toilet on a regular basis, uh, this is less big and solid than that. So. This is gonna go down the drain. Anyways, you guys, that is everything you need to know about cleaning your basic taping tools. You know, keep water, keep standing water off of all your carbon tools. Stainless steel tools just need to be reasonably clean. And, um, you know, good quality ones won't rust at all, even when left in buckets of water overnight or for weeks. But sort of lower quality stainless steel will rust when left in water. So know what your tool is. There's only one way to find out and that's by ruining them. So um, now I know to always keep these, you know, more or less dry. Anyways, that's it. I'm babbling now. The video's over. I hope you guys are doing really well. I hope your projects are going really well. And I want to say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Till the next one.